Thank you for joining me for Just a Thought. We are in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 15, we read, Salt is good, but if, that, if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. And that's exactly what we're focusing our attention on, is having peace with one another. What is salt? What is he talking about? Well, let's look over at Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 5, we're going to pick up in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. If the salt loses its flavor, it has no more purpose. It has no more use. And you just throw it out and people can walk on it because it's just of no value. And so we are to be the salt of the earth. Well, a little bit more clarification on that in Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 19 we read, Therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. In other words, to build them up. So, if I'm going to be the salt of the earth, and that is to, to pursue peace among anyone I come in contact with, my heart is going to be set then not to destroy not to tear down, not to defame, but to try to speak those things that rather than pushing people away, it actually draws them in. Now, truth divides, no doubt. And there's going to be people who just despise us and hate us because we stand for the truth, because we walk with Jesus, we walk in the light. And so, there's going to be some divide there, but what you're going to, what they're going to hear come out of our mouth is not going to be derogatory. Notice over in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Now if God returned evil for evil, uh, in the sense that we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that uh, later in the week. If God gave us what we deserve, there wouldn't be any grace. If God gave us what we deserved, or He returned what we're giving to Him, then we'd all be doomed. And so. When we read, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. In this same context of not returning evil for evil and so on, we are a people who not only don't seek vengeance, as we'll see tomorrow, but we're a people who do good, even though we may be mistreated. Turn with me over to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, we're going to begin reading in verse 8. James chapter 3 and verse 8. We're going to be focusing on the tongue here and how we talk. And again, yesterday we talked about the heart and what's in the heart proceeds out of the mouth. It also is seen in, in our deeds. That's what's in our heart. So here there's the same kind of correlation. James chapter 3, let's begin in verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude and the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. And in essence, he's, he's about to say, it's impossible. It's really impossible for you to bless God in one moment 
And in the next moment, cursed man who's been made in his likeness. That it is his creation. Think about it this way. Someone goes and they, they, they paint something. They, they you know, get a canvas and they paint a picture. And you go and you look at it and you insult the picture. You're not insulting the picture. You're insulting the artist. And so in like manner, when we in, in, insult man, we are insulting God. And we're talking about brethren. We're talking about people who, you know, they're not doing evil. We're, they're not doing anything wrong in, in that sense. And, but we're, we're cursing them. Um, we're, we're throwing vile out of our mouth, and then we tell God how great he is. Notice how he continues. In verse 11, does a spring send forth fresh water <clears throat> and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Two opposites? No. Thus, no spring can yield both salt water and fresh. So, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. How can it? How can it be, brethren, that all too often we have Christian against Christian? And it's over petty things. It's over uh, judgment, not sin, not wrongdoing, but the way someone looks or the, uh, the way they carry themselves or a, a color that they might wear or whatever it may be. I've had people uh, be pretty rude to me in regard to my beard. Well, that's my choice to have this beard. And I'm not really trying to defend myself, but why would they degrade me and not do things that would encourage me or strengthen me? What about you? What about me? How do I treat people? What's in my heart will come out of my mouth. What's in my heart will my heart will be seen in deeds. And how am I treating, am I pursuing peace? Am I a peacemaker? Or am I causing dissension? I'm not even going to be looking at those verses. But there are plenty of verses in which we are instructed not to be divisive. But there are people who are divisive. It seems just to be divisive. They, they got to have drama in their life and they're not happy if they're not miserable, it seems. Turn with me over to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace. That we're gracious seasoned with salt there's that salt again seasoned with salt in other words our words are palatable they're easily received they're not abrasive let your speech always be with grace unmerited favor <laughs> they're not getting what they deserve maybe seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. You know, sometimes those that we feel close to, we feel that we can, we can be rude and disrespectful and abrasive and harsh because we have that close relationship. But it's amazing how many relationships we can ruin because we, quote unquote, thought we had some liberty to tell them what we really felt. And really, when it boils down to it, it was very hurtful, demeaning, rude, <laughs> um, just nasty. It shouldn't be. 
We shouldn't treat one another like that. We should be a people who pursue peace and live as peaceably as possible. That's our responsibility. How they respond and what they do to us, we can't control that. But we should be able to control our tongue. We should be able to control our actions. We need to control our thoughts, our minds, our hearts. And we need to treat one another with kindness and generosity and forbearance and long-suffering. That's a challenge. I'm not saying it's easy. But I'm saying that's what the Lord instructs us to do.